morning. Today I'm going to be reviewing the Christopher Ward C65 Trident GMT. This watch is available from ChristopherWard.com for €1,245. So firstly let's look at the box that the C65 Trident GMT comes in and then I'll talk you through the other items one gets with the piece. So the watch box comes protected with this matte black outer cardboard sleeve which has the Christopher Ward twin flag emblem uh, pressed into it. So very aesthetically pleasing. One removes the matte black cardboard outer sleeve and inside is the watch box itself. So the watch box is made from solid wood. It's a tray which has a sleeve which one withdraws from the tray. So the sleeve is made from wood and it is fully covered by a vinyl plastic which is very aesthetically pleasing. On the lid to the watch box it has the Christopher Ward brand logo and also the twin flag emblem pressed into it, so very aesthetically pleasing. Finishing of the vinyl plastic on the sleeve is done to a very high standard and also the finishing of the wood tray is also done to a very high standard. I think Christopher Ward deserves full credit for coming up with a different design watch box and finishing it to a very high standard, bearing in mind that this is a mid-tier piece costing €1,245. So one pulls the wooden tray out of the sleeve and I just want to talk about the design because I really like it. The interior of that sleeve is actually fully lined with a fabric felt material and that means there's no annoying scratching sound of friction between the wooden tray and the sleeve when one withdraws the tray. So very nice attention to detail. Now in the interior of this sleeve it has two magnets and those magnets also attract two magnets which are inset into the wooden tray so the two magnets attract each other and that means that that sleeve shuts with a positive click as the magnets attract each other very well executed design and i think christopher ward deserve cr full credit for coming up with a unique design to watch box rather than copying the other generic watch boxes one often sees at this price point so i'll talk you through the other items one gets with the piece one gets this C65 GMT owner's handbook. Now this owner's instruction manual is very well written. Lots of pictures and diagrams and I think it's a very well crafted uh, owner's manual because the diagrams are clear and concise, the English is plain and easy to read and it really does suffice in fully educating the collector all aspects of the operation of the C65 GMT. It even details how to operate the quick release spring bars used in the end links of the bracelet and it also details thoroughly how to operate the ratcheting mechanism of the micro adjustment clasp. So every aspect of the watch has been covered including the operation of the automatic movements, the Solita SW330 GMT movement. So very good read if you're unfamiliar with GMT pieces and the operation of the Solita SW330. I think it's a very well made and well written owner's instruction manual that they deserve full credit for. One also gets uh, another booklet which has the Christopher Ward brand logo and twin flag emblem on the front as you can see and inside is a plastic warranty card and this details the terms and conditions of the 6060 guarantee. So I'm pleased to report that the Christopher Ward C65 Trident GMT is covered by a 60 day return policy and in, in addition to that it's also covered by a 60 month or 5 year warranty on the movements, the Solita SW330. So I think it's very reassuring because this is a Swiss made piece and it's covered by a 60 day return policy. If you buy the watch and you're unhappy with it for any reason, you can simply return it to Christopher Ward within that 60 day period for a full refund. And also the movement itself is covered by five years, which is very good, bearing in mind the price point of the piece. So inside the watch box, it has this plastic lid, which has the twin flag logo pressed into it, as you can see. One removes the plastic lid and the watch itself sits on a piece of plastic which is covered with vinyl. And it really is a very nice design, very functional and it just works very well. It's very aesthetically pleasing, very nicely finished and I really like it. I think this watch box is one of the better watch boxes I've seen and certainly at the price point of €1,245 Euro, uh, it's one of the best. So with regards to the watch itself I'll talk you through the specification. The C65 Trilimp GMT has a 41mm case diameter, it has a 47mm lug-to-lug measurement, a thickness of 12mm thick 
and it has a lug width of 22 millimeters. The Oyster style bracelet tapers from 22 millimeters at the lugs down to 18 millimeters at the two button push clasp. So very well executed bracelet, very nice taper, 22 down to 18, which perfectly balances the 41 millimeter head of the piece. I like the nice slender taper to the lugs of that 41 millimeter case. They have got the proportions of this C65 GMT done to perfection. With regards to the case shape, 47 millimeters is a rather short lug to lug measurement. Now the benefit of that is this piece will suit collectors with a smaller wrist of six to seven inches. And that's uncommon. Usually it's the case that 41 millimeter pieces are large and they wear with great heft and wrist presence on the wrist as one would expect with a 22 millimeter lug width. But by keeping the lug to lug measurement short at 47 millimeters rather than 50 millimeters, for example, it wraps around the wrist with a very snug fit. So if you're a collector with a six to seven inch wrist, I'm absolutely confident this piece will fit you well. If you're a collector with a larger wrist of seven to eight inches respectively, it will also fit you well. So it really is the perfect balance for a 41 millimeter piece to have a 47 millimeter lug to lug measurement, but a thickness of only 12 millimeters. Now with regards to the aesthetics of the watch, as you can see, it has an aluminium Pepsi bezel insert and a no crown guards case. So it really does have the vintage aesthetic of a 1960s dive piece. It reminds me of the Tudor Black Bay GMT, which is also a 41 millimeter. So I would say to you, if you're considering a Tudor Black Bay GMT, also consider this Christopher Ward C65 uh, Trident GMT. Now, the advantage this piece has over the Tudor Black Bay isn't just that it's less expensive at 1,245 euro. Its main advantage is the thickness is only 12 millimeters. Now contrast that with the Tudor Black Bay GMT. The thickness of the Black Bay GMT is 14.75 millimeters. So this C65 Trident GMT is 2.7 millimeters thinner than a Tudor Black Bay GMT. And as you can see, it doesn't have the characteristic slab sides and tall profile of the Black Bay. I really like the undercuts of that case and it really does complement that short 47, mi 47 millimeter lug to lug measurement. Nice mirror polishing to the undercut which also complements the nice large bevel to the tops of the lugs. And the bevel, which is mirror polished to a flawless finish, marks the transition between the brass satin finish to the tops of lugs and the brass satin finish to the flanks of the case. With regards to the case finishing, I really think Christopher Ward deserve full credit for this because it's the kind of case finishing one would expect to see on a Grand Seiko piece. Uh, it really is like Zaratsu case polishing, which is the highest standard of Grand Seiko polishing. So I really like it. Now with regards to the rest of the specification, it has a domed sapphire crystal, which reminds me of the top hat crystals used by Rolex in the 1960s. It has that top hat box profile to the domed sapphire crystal. AR coating on the underside of the sapphire crystal means that it has a nice anti-reflective property when one tilts the piece at an oblique angle. With regards to the dial layout, I really like the execution of the uh, indices. Good symmetry, date complication at three o'clock. The date wheel is black with white numerals, so it's clearly legible. Now with regards to the balance of the design, I previously reviewed the C65 Dartmouth and I actually think the Christopher Ward brand logo at 12 on the C65 Dartmouth is better positioned. I prefer it to the nine o'clock position of the Christopher Ward brand logo on this C65 Trident GMT. At the 12 o'clock position on the dial, one has a subtle uh, pressed in twin flag logo for the brand emblem. I actually think it would be better to remove the twin flag brand logo at 12 and simply replace it with the Christopher Ward as is the case on the C65 Dartmouth. Very nicely executed dial, I like the bat on hands and the use of the red arrowhead GMT hand which contrasts beautifully with the matte black dial. So functional, legible and aesthetically pleasing and it really does work very well because the matte black isn't highly reflective and with the AR coating on the underside of the dome sapphire crystal the dial and hands and indices are clearly legible in all light conditions with regards to the bezel aluminium bezel insert coin edge solid stainless steel bezel 120 click unidirectional bezel as one would expect now a minor criticism is personally on a gmt piece i would prefer to see a bi-directional 120 click bezel rather than a unidirectional uh, bezel 
Unidirectional bezels with 120 clicks are perfectly acceptable on dive pieces, but however, on a GMT piece, really they're more functional if they have a bi-directional rather than unidirectional bezel. But having said that, the alignment is perfect. The looms pip and triangle align perfectly with the 12 o'clock index on the dial, so no builds quality or quality control issues. Minimal back play to the bezel, very pleasing bezel action. Good solid clicks, nice loud clicking sound, and one gets firm resistance. It's one of the most pleasing bezel actions I've experienced. In terms of resistance, it reminds me to, of a Seiko bezel action, such as the SKX007, or alternatively, a Steinhardt Ocean 1. So if you're familiar with those pieces, that's the kind of resistance level we're looking at here. Good, firm resistance to the 120 clicks. With regards to the execution of the Pepsi bezel, nice dark navy blue colour to the blue top side of the bezel, nice uh, lighter red anodized finish to the aluminium to the red side of the pepsi bezel so i think the color tones are very nice they give a good vintage aesthetic the navy blue and the red really do complement each other it really does give the vintage look of a vintage rolex gmt master or as i've discussed the tudor black bay gmt so very nice the way the anodized uh, aluminium bezel insert reflects the light and also complements the thin profile to the stainless steel coin edge finish bezel so i like the coin edge bezel and i also like the domes top hat style crystal that box style of crystal really does work very well with the slender profile of the coin edge finishing to the bezel so good finish to the case, good finish to the solid stainless steel crown, which provides an effective hermetic seal to 150 meters of water resistance. It's signed with the Christopher Ward twin flag logo, coin edge finish. Now, personally, I would prefer to see a screw down crown at this price point rather than a push pull crown. But bear in mind, this isn't meant to be a dive watch, it's a GMT watch. So I think 150 meters of water resistance is perfectly acceptable. If it were a dive piece, I would say that it really needs a screw down crown to gain 100, uh, 200 or 300 meters of hermetic seal, but 150 meters is acceptable for a GMT watch. With regards to its operation, the Salita SW330 movement used in this piece really does have a very good crown action. It's got positive clicks. When one pulls the crown out of the case to the different time setting positions, one can clearly feel the distinction between the date complication setting position and the hour hand setting position to set the GMT hour hand or the hands of the watch. So it really does work very well. Pleasure to use that push pull crown. With regards to the case back, solid stainless steel case back, nice matte bead, bead blasted effect finish to the center section, uh, radial uh, concentric brushing to the outer section of the screw down case back and the circumference is finished to a flawless mirror finish. I really like the use of the uh, embossed Christopher Ward Trident branding and also the Trident Spear in the centre of the case back. It just is a very well finished and very well executed case back. Absolute pleasure to look at and also very comfortable to wear on the wrist. The uh, embossed Trident Spearhead and also the Christopher Ward and Trident embossing doesn't irritate the wrist. It doesn't feel uh, rough against the wrist. It actually feels very smooth. So comfortable piece to wear for long periods of time. With regards to the solid stainless steel end links, they're attached to the ends of the oyster style bracelet by two screws, as you can see. Very well finished end links with good uh, quick releases to the spring bars rather than using conventional spring bars. And I think Christopher Ward deserves full credit for this. The execution of the end links with the two quick releases are done to perfection. Finished to a high standard and also a pleasure to use because one doesn't need a spring bar tool to remove the end links from the case if you want to wear the watch on a brace on a strap as an alternative to the bracelet. With regards to the clasp, it's one of my favourite aspects of the watch. Two button push clasp. Now the finishing is absolutely superb. It's Rolex quality. Nice brush satin finish to the grains of the 316L grade stainless steel. Chris Ward twin flag emblem engraved to perfection on the clasp. And I really like the light trigger action to those two button pushes. Interior of the clasp is also finished to the same high quality as the exterior. Signed with the Christopher Ward brand logo engraved to the interior of the solid stainless steel milled clasp. Very well executed, just good to look at, good build quality. Now another thing I really like about it is the ratcheting micro adjustment mechanism. As you can see, it has a spring-loaded catch, which one can depress with one's thumbnail. 
and the bracelets is easy to adjust with this micro adjustment ratchet each click is very positive and as you can see one can shorten the bracelet manually without using any tools simply by using that ratcheting mechanism to release the ratchet one simply presses one's thumbnail into the spring loaded uh, uh, clasp as that releases the bracelet to maximum extension and one can adjust it again using the ratcheting clicks so very well executed it's one of the best ratcheting mechanisms i've seen on any watch absolute pleasure to look at and absolute pleasure to operate it really does work very well and they've done it very well because they fitted it into a very low profile two button push clasp as you can see uh, it's not bulky and chunky as is often the case with ratcheting mechanisms and i actually would go as far as to say i prefer this to the glide lock mechanism used on my rolex submariner it really does remind me of the two button push clasp used on amiga pieces such as the planet ocean so very well executed and again a credit to Christopher Ward because this is the kind of class one would expect to see on a mid-tier piece costing 3,000 to 4,000 euro but this piece costs 1,245 euro so significantly less expensive. With regards to the brush satin finish it's Rolex quality in terms of the finishing to the grains of the metal. 316L lovely sheen to it and I like the fact it has satin finish on the top side underside and flanks rather than mirror polishing to the flanks. It adds interest to the bracelets and it contrasts beautifully with the mirror polishing to the bevels and also the undercuts of the case flanks. So I'll give you a wrist shot and you can see how it fits on my 8 inch wrist. Now I haven't sized the bracelet, I simply took the piece out of the watch and listen to that, just absolute perfection. The click of that two button push clasp is very reassuring just looks very good nice sheen to it and as you can see it fits my eight inch wrist to perfection the 47 millimeter profile to that lug to lug measurement with that undercut means that it wraps around the wrist very well nice snug fit and as i've discussed this will fit a six to seven inch wrist just as well as a seven to eight inch wrist so I love the taper of the lugs, 41mm case, 22mm lugs and as you can see that 47mm lug to lug measurement really does give it a nice snug fit and it's deceptive because although it's only 12mm it actually looks like a taller piece due to the domed top hat style crystal. So great wrist presence at 41mm but at only 12mm thick it will easily fit underneath a shirt cuff of a business shirt. So a practical daily wear piece and very comfortable to wear for long periods of time if you're going to need a daily wear piece to wear for 8 to 12 hours per day this is it it's deceptive that it's 170 grams because it really does feel lighter than that on the wrist uh, due to the sublime comforts I really like the smooth feeling of the case back and I also like the feeling of the well finished bracelet the comfort is largely due to the balancing of the watch it's 41 millimeters, so yes, it is a large head of a piece, but because the bracelet tapers from 22 to 18 and it has a good solid clasp, that actually balances the bracelet and clasp to the head of the piece. So on the wrist, it actually feels very well balanced rather than being a top heavy piece with tremendous heft. So with regards to the movement used in the watch, it uses the Solita SW330, and that is a credible Swiss made automatic GMT movement. So this watch is made in Switzerland and it uses a Swiss Solita movement. The SW330 is a very reliable, well-proven workhorse GMT movement. It runs at the industry standard for automatic movements, 28,800 vibrations per hour and a frequency of 4 Hz. Now the benefit of that beat rate and frequency is that the second hand sweeps very smoothly around the dial. The second hand is very well executed and as you can see the counterbalance to the second hand has the trident spearhead and that adds continuity to the design because this is the C65 Trident GMT and as you can see there's a trident spearhead on the case back. So I like that continuity between the trident on the case back and the trident on the counterbalance of the sweeping second hand. So the SW330 movement has hand winding and hacking and it also has a 42 hour power reserve which is perfectly acceptable. This is the Alabor grade of SW330 and what that means is the movement is regulated in four positions. So it has a mac maximum accuracy deviation of plus or minus 20 seconds per day and an average accuracy as being stated as plus or minus 5 seconds per day. 
And I'm pleased to report that the SW330 movement used in this piece is indeed running to within plus five seconds per day. So that's a credit to Christopher Ward and it's also a credit that they chose the SW330 automatic movement because it is a true GMT movement. It's very good to get a Salita movement running at plus five seconds per day, a lab oil grade, and bearing in mind that this is 1,245 euro. Good, reliable, well-proven workhorse Salita movement, good GMT functions to it. I have no um, qualms whatsoever about it. There are no negatives to the SW330. It's a reliable and accurate movement. Plus five seconds from GMT movement is perfectly acceptable. Good to have the date complication and also good to have hand winding and hacking functions to the movement. So I like it. Now let's do a loom test and we'll see how the loom performs when it's fully charged up to the absolute maximum. So I'm going to charge it up using my 100 LED UV torch and we'll see how the SLN white superluminova performs. Now I've got high expectations. I previously reviewed the C65 uh, Dartmouth and I was very impressed with the quality of the superluminova on that piece and I'm expecting that Christopher Ward haven't cut any corners to the superluminova which is the SLN white superluminova on this Trident C65. Right so that's now fully charged and as you can see it has not disappointed. Nice bright green tone to the loom which reminds me of C3 superluminova. The loom pip on the GMT bezel is glowing very brightly. Baton hands are also glowing brightly and also the arrowhead of the GMT hour hand. So no difficulties whatsoever differentiating between the GMT hour hand and also the baton style hour hands. They're clearly different from each other. I like the symmetry of the indices and I also like the large loom plots on the baton hands. Good quality loom glowing brightly and continuing to glow for a good length of time. So they've done a good job with that SLN white loom and I think it's a credit that they haven't cut any corners with the loom on the watch. So lastly I'll summarise the piece. What do I think of it overall? Well when I'm considering reviewing a watch on my channel the watch should meet two criteria. The watch should be both excellent quality and excellent value at the respective price point. So the price point of this C65 tri Trident GMT is €1,245. Yes, I consider it to be excellent quality, and yes, I consider it to be excellent value. Really, this is a credible alternative to the Tudor Black Bay GMT. The main advantage is that it's significantly less expensive than the Black Bay GMT. One is getting a 3,000 to 4,000 euro price point piece for only 1,245 euro. Swiss made with a credible Swiss made Salita SW330 movement, which is a lab all grade. So really, one has to consider the value proposition of this piece. So what are the negatives to the watch? Well, I've discussed the minor criticisms I have. I would prefer to see it with a bi-directional bezel rather than unidirectional. I would prefer to see it with a screw-down crown rather than a push-ball crown. And lastly, I would prefer to see it with screw pins in the bracelet rather than push pins. But however, these are minor criticisms and one has to accept that there will be some cost-cutting measures to produce this watch and retail it at €1,245 and still be able to make a profit. So I think the negatives are minor and I think that overall to get a Swiss made GMT piece with a Salita SW330 GMT movement really is outstanding value at this price point. So I'm going to declare it a champagne watch for lemonade money. I highly recommend this watch to you for your consideration. I think it is outstanding. I hope you've liked my review of the Christopher Ward C65 Trident GMT. Please feel free to post your own comments below the video. Thank you very much.